Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prince. Well, God is good. I'd like to welcome everyone to Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Today's message is called Conformed to the World or Transformed by the Word. An octopus, if you put it in different settings, the color of the octopus will conform. How many knew that? If you put a brown object or brown coral, the octopus will conform colors to brown, right? I saw a YouTube video of an octopus stuck on a boat, and there was this little tiny hole, and the octopus squeezed through this little tiny hole and came out. But the octopus simply conformed to the hole. It didn't change. Its nature didn't change. Its eyes didn't move in different places. It's still the same octopus. It simply conforms everywhere it goes. If it needs to go inside of a shell, it will conform to the mold of the shell. But it doesn't change. If, it, if there's a blue color coral, it will conform to the blue color. How many know as Christians, we're not to do that? We're not to sound like the world, look like the world, taste like... We're supposed to be different. Amen. And I'm comparing an octopus to a caterpillar. A caterpillar does not conform. A caterpillar transforms into a butterfly. Its nature changes. A caterpillar will spend its time crawling on trees and eating leaves and crawling through the dirt. And then it transforms into a butterfly. It becomes above what it used to be into. How many know God wants you to be above the things that you used to be into? Amen. So why did I use this about the entertainment and music? Let's go back to the Old Testament. In Daniel 3, 4, it says, Then Harold loudly proclaim nations and peoples of every language this is what you are commanded to do as soon as you hear the sound as soon as you hear the sound of the horn the flute the zither i don't even know what that is the lyre the harp the pipe and all kinds of music you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Amen. I find this very interesting that Nebuchadnezzar chose to use music as an indicator for the people to worship a false god. And I'm coming to say today that the devil's tricks have not changed. Amen. Amen. His tactics have not changed. If I say this to you, give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that. You have been conditioned. You have conformed to that song. That shows the power that music has to be connect to our mind see you can remember things better with music than you can without music and i look at this thing that the devil when when, when the devil was possessing saul and the demons were tormenting saul that david came by with a harp and he played that harp and those demons left saul well, I believe that if the demons can leave Saul based on a certain type of music, then demons can be drawn to Saul with another kind of music. Amen. Because the devil tries to copy what God is up to. Amen. See, the devil can only copy. He can't create. God is a creator. Amen. See, those people that rode by, bumping their music, they are conformed 
to the world. They didn't create that. I used to be like that too. I used to ride and lean to the left. Amen. With my 412s and my zero, uh, zero gauge uh, power wire that would drain out my battery and kill all my alternators and cause me to get uh, noise pollution tickets. <laughs> With my PPI 1000 watt amp. And my, my, my uh, trunk rattling. Why? Because I saw what the world was doing. And instead of me coming up with my own identity given by God, I conformed myself into what the world was doing. And how did that work out for me? It ended up with a nice pair of shiny bracelets. Amen? Real nice bracelets. Strong, durable. <laughs> when I shared about that, about music and entertainment, I'm simply telling you to guard your heart. Amen? Amen? Guard your heart. You have to protect yourself. You have to protect your soul and your mind. And the devil uses subliminal messages. They got algorithms going out, recording everything that you do. Every time you go on Facebook, al algorithms. Computer analysis is processing the patterns of people so that they can manipulate, so that they can control, so that they can persuade, so that they can influence, so that they can conform according to their agenda. Not your agenda. God's not looking to manipulate us. He wants to tell us the blunt truth. And he wants us to agree to that truth so that we can be transformed. Amen? Amen. Satan uses fear to program. See, a lot of times uh, when people want you to do something, they'll start using fear. Well, if you don't spend all this money, then this, your house will fall apart. If you don't buy this insurance, the end of the world will take place. If you don't buy this shirt, you're not going to get the job. It's, it's all fear tactics. If you don't take this medication that has a side effect of death, <laughs> then you will die. <laughs> Daniel chapter 3 verses 6, it says, Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing fire. How many would be af afraid of that? How many like to be burned? No. When I was a child, we had an incinerator. Anyone ever used an incinerator? I don't even know if they still have those anymore. But uh, when I was a child, they had incinerators, and we would take our whole garbage bag, and I would throw it into the incinerator, and poof. Could you imagine being thrown into an incinerator? That's a horrifying thought. And so the king knew what was going to psychologically cause the people to be afraid. Now let's, let's use it from a logical perspective. Per se, nobody listened to him. Is he going to throw his entire kingdom of people in the incinerator? Because guess what would happen if he did? He would be a king of only one person, himself. <laughs> See, and the world doesn't want you to think logically. The devil doesn't. He uses fear as a tactic. And just like he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his tactics have not changed. Anyone like sports? Any sports fans? Thinking, Frederick, you're a baller out of control. I know you like sports. If we, always, if we are always defensive, and I want you to think from a sports perspective. Right? If we are always defensive, we are never offensive. Mm -hmm. That's true. If you're on the defensive side, you can't score. 
If you're on the defensive side, you can't score. You need to become offensive in order to score. Amen? How many of you know the devil wants to keep us always defensive? So that you're always trying to defend yourself. You're always trying to explain yourself. You're always having to answer all these questions. You're always have to... How many know God doesn't need us to always defend ourselves? Amen. And Daniel 3.16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves. Before you in this matter. Now how many would have rose up and rebuked the devil or rebuked the king and started defending and started breaking down all these things and saying all this and quoting all these scriptures and defend how many would have done that just automatically? He said, Look, we don't need to defend you. We don't need to defend ourselves. Sometimes the least we defend ourselves the more God defends you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I like that. In Daniel 3.17 it says, If we are thrown into a blazing furnace. I like this. He's saying, well, not only are we not going to defend ourselves, not only are we not going to conform to this condition that you're trying to create. Nebuchadnezzar was trying to create a collective mindset. He was trying to create a collective consciousness that whenever these people heard this music, they would automatically bow down and worship the golden image, the fake image, the false god. He was trying to condition them to conform to this sin. How come Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't conform? Because they were all already they were already see when you're already transformed you don't need to conform. Amen. They were already transformed. They already knew the truth. They knew the truth and they were willing to stand on their truth. Amen. They were willing to die for what they believed in. Amen. See, that's when you know you really know what you know. See, because we can say all kinds of stuff. I believe this, I believe that, I believe this and that and that and that. Right? But when your life is on the line, are you still going to stand on what you believe in or are you going to conform to the pressure? And these Jewish men of God, they proved to the king and to everyone who was watching that we will not conform. You can threaten us even if you throw us in the fire. We still won't conform. Are you there? But even if he does not, look at what he says. If you throw us into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set. Amen? Amen. These people were standing their ground. What's that Bible say? Don't be like a, a wave being tossed to and from with every sound, every doctrine and everything. You don't know what you believe. You come around these folks, you believe this. You come around this person, you believe that. You come over here, you're a crip. You come over here, you're a blood. You come over here, you're a folk. You come over here, you're an atheist. You come over here, oh, we're smoking weed. We come over here, we're drinking, smoking cigarettes, swearing, cussing. Right? You haven't made it up your mind. Uh, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Look at what this point is. In order to affect the majority, 
please hear this. In order to eject, uh, affect the majority, we need to stand as the minority. Right? The Bible says that we are peculiar people. That we are set apart. We're not to look like everyone else. There's, some, there's supposed to be something different about us. And it says, 319, it says, And Nebuchadnezzar was furious. He said, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his attitude towards them changed. You ever have someone's attitude towards you change because you didn't conform to what they wanted you to do? And they're added. Now, see, they were good as long as you marched to their beat and did everything that they said. We're good. Right? We're good. Come on over for dinner. Let's go get some coffee. Let's drink some tea with our pinkies out. But the moment that you disagree with them on something, all of a sudden, boom, cut off. I don't know you anymore. Get away from me. It says his attitude changed towards them. See, these, these Jews were great. They were awesome. Until they wouldn't do everything that he wanted. It says he ordered the furnace seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into a blazing furnace. People are transformed when they see the power of word manifesting in our life. When people see the power of God working for you, now, I'm not talking about you say you believe this, but then you actually do this. See, a lot of times, some people will come into a church and they will conform into a church-like image. They, they will conform. When they're around Christians, they pull out their King James, their Bible. They put on their tie and their shiny shoes, right? And they, they look a certain way. They conform to what they believe is an image of Christianity. But the moment they step outside that building, they conform back into the world. How many know God's not looking for that? How many know that is actually more destructive See, when you're really born again and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that we are created new. All things become, they're old, they're passed away. I'm butchering the scripture. Amen. We are new creatures in Christ. Yes. Amen. A new creature, just like the caterpillar becoming the butterfly. We live differently. I remember all the times that I got locked up. And, and, and every time I got locked up, I was a Christian. <laughs> I would get out and hootie who. I would live like the devil. And then I would get locked up again. And then I would go to church and jail. And at, meanwhile, I'm writing home. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a new person. I'm different. <laughs> How many of you know the people who knew me, they got tired of listening to me? And then there became a time in 2002 where I got transformed. And something happened to me that I knew I would never be the same. Even if I wanted to be like I was, I couldn't. God changed my heart. He changed my mind. He changed my soul, my thinking, my desires. He changed it. I knew that something was different. And guess what? The proof is in the pudding. Amen. God has kept me out of prison and jail since 2002. I've never made it a year without going to jail. Amen. Why? Why did I never make it a year without going to jail? Because I only conformed to the condition of the jail. How many of you know prisons can't transform people? How many of you know AA can't transform people? Medication can't transform people. People can't transform people. Only God can. Amen. Amen. And that's what people need is a touch from God. 
A transformation that comes from having a relationship and faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we need. People are transformed when they see the power. I remember when I was in jail and, and God sent pastors up to me and they would preach and they would testify about all the things that they went through, all the pain that they suffered and how God changed them. That affected me. My pastor who died, he used to tell me the story how he used to shoot God out the sky in East Cleveland. How he used to sell crack and he used to run around with a gun and shoot people and sell drugs. And then he showed me how, how he cried out to God. And God transformed him. And he's never been the same. Since that story, 30-some years went by. He never went back to jail. I didn't trust him. I didn't believe him. I checked his record. For myself. I wanted to see what, is what he's saying really actually. Is, you can see it. Uh, burglary, robbery, assault, uh, criminal possessions, all on his record. And then all of a sudden there's this long gap. Because I saw the power of the word of God operating in his life. Amen. And look what, look what the Bible says. It says in Daniel 3.20, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent the angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except for their own God. Even the king changed because of their transformation. Your transformation will affect other people. Amen. Your conformity will not. Did anybody hear that? Your transformation will affect other people. Your conformity will not affect other people. Nobody's impressed by it. I used to tell the people in the jail, they didn't want to hear it. I said, you're walking in this prison trying to act like you're the toughest person. I said, you're only fooling yourself. Nobody is impressed. Nobody cares. Even if you beat someone up, nobody still cares. It's not like they're, they get to go home afterwards. You're only impressing yourself. Nobody's really afraid of you because they know if they get an, I don't care how you're the biggest, baddest person, it don't matter. Believe me, when you get 20, 30 people, all that Hollywood stuff, <laughs> and, we, and we're, we're conformed with these fictitious uh, uh, movies and TVs that you got a little tiny petite woman and she whoops a hundred men. I could ask Brother Juan, are you buying into that one? You putting stock in that? Are you believing that? See, when you actually do martial arts for yourself, you know that there are restrictions. Amen. It looks good on TV, but in reality and application, it's just not happening. But let's look at to the extent that the king went. I like this. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Let's just pause right there. Wow! If you go against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you will be cut in pieces. And then he, he keeps going. He's not done yet. Then he says, their houses shall be made a dung hill. Can we pause for a moment? Does anyone understand what that means? He's saying not only will you be cut in pieces, but your home. It will be used as a toilet bowl. For those that don't know King James. Dung hill means doo-doo hill. Doo-doo. <laughs> Do, do, your house. When you go against the real God, your house will be turned into doo-doo. That's why I like, there's a scripture that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Why? Because we don't want our house to be turned into doo-doo. Can I get an amen? Amen. 
He was really going somewhere. He was trying to drive it home. Like, look, you're not going to mess with these people. Now, would God bless him for blessing God's people? Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm just about done, folks. Just, uh, just ride a little bit farther. I'm almost done. Amen. Amen. It says God's perfect will for us is to be transformed into His image. Amen. Amen. Do you understand that? Not conformed, but transformed. See, a lot of times people say, oh, I don't go to church. It's full of hypocrites. No, it's, conf it's full of people that have conformed to a religion, but they haven't got a relationship with God. And, and that's deceiving, right? So just a few people, you can't judge anything by just a few people. That don't prove nothing. That just proves a few people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing in anything. You might have some Satanists going to a Satan church that might happen to do some good things. Well, that's why I don't go to a Satanist church because they do good things over there. <laughs> no, you just had some people that were even rebelling against the Satanist church. That don't prove anything. So all Satanist people are good people then. You, you see how I'm switching the point? Pastor saying we should go to Satan today. <laughs> We should be transformed into his image. That's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And look what it says in Romans 12, 1. It says, I beseech you, brethren. In other words, I beg you. I'm asking you. I'm pleading with you, brethren and sistren. Yeah. Did I just make up another word, Sister Tia? Yeah. Sistren? Ride with me, though. <laughs> Amen. We might have to get it published. I beseech you, brethren and sistren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will oh, of Brooklyn God. Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Word.